So welcome to Homestead National Monument of America's Virtual Fiddle, Fiddle Festival. We're starting today's ac activities with Debbie Greenblatt and her workshop, Playing by Ear with Debbie Greenblatt. Now, we remember the fiddle and its impact on uh, homesteaders. Homestead National Monument of America um, remembers the homestead story of 1862, which gave an opportunity to earn 160 acres of land. And this is a long story. It started in the Civil War. It didn't end in Alaska till 1986. But fiddle music was a huge part of this story. When reading the memoirs and the stories of homesteaders like Laura Ingalls Wilder, we can see the way that the fiddle was used um, to combat, combat loneliness, um, to bring togetherness, to uh, ward away the cold on a snowy day. Um, so we're so excited to have Debbie um, be here with us for our first part of our virtual event to teach three songs that would have been brought over by the Promise of the Homestead Act. Now, you didn't have to be an American citizen um, to homestead. You just had to declare your intention to become one. So musical traditions and cultural traditions were brought from all over the world. And we're so glad Debbie's here to help us remember the importance of the fiddle and of those different cultures. So with that, I'll hand it over to Debbie. Thanks, Amber, and thank you all for coming. This is really fun so far. Hope it continues to be fun. Now, the first tune I'm going to uh, show you, if it's too easy, then don't play the melody, play the harmony. If you don't like my bowings, don't do them. Just concentrate on the pitch and the rhythm. And if you want uh, PDFs of the tunes sent to you after the workshop, just send me an email and I'll send them all along. Anyway, here we go. Uh, the first tune is Rose Tree. It's from Ireland. And uh, the, I'll play the A, it's a two section tune, A, A, B, B. I will play the first section and with just the notes. And then this on the repeat, I'm gonna add some double stops and fancy things. And I'll do the same thing with the second half. And then we'll break it apart into uh, little bits. So here we go. That's how I'm tuned. I hope you're tuned eventually. Uh, Rose Tree. these tunes actually have structures. Uh, in Rose Tree, the A part starts out with one eight bar, eight beat phrase, and followed by the second phrase, which is all right, also eight beats. The third phrase is the same as the first phrase, and the second phrase is the same with a little of, uh, as the second phrase in the beginning, uh, with a little bit of a different ending. So I'll just give you the first eight beats or so, I'll play it slow and then you play it slow, but I don't want to hear you because it would just get all distorted, but you'll know what you're doing. One, two, oh, and feel free to watch my fingers. They're right there. One, two, oh, one, and two. Now it's your turn. Do, do, do. couple more times. Now the second phrase, another eight beats or so of fun stuff. I'll do it slow and then you follow me doing it slow. One, two, one and two.
Okay, and the second part of the first part is pretty much just the same. You do the first phrase again. Your turn. followed by mostly the second phrase, same thing that we did in the first half. And here it is, slowly, first me, and then you. Nope, that wasn't it, never mind. In the second part of the first part, it's... to the first half of the tune. The second half of the tune starts out with a much longer phrase, all on the E string, if you've got an E string, and it is followed by uh, an, a sort, it's sort of a question and answer. So the first part of the second half goes, and then what comes after that is another question and answer thing. You play the same thing we did in the first half. And then it's the same thing we did for the ending the first time we tried to find an ending. So I'll break that apart again. We'll start with the B part, which is that elongated section on the E string. One, two, one, and two. Same phrases that we did basically in the first part. And that'll be. same as the ending in the first part. And here it goes slowly. If you could raise your hand, David will see you, and uh, we can answer any questions you might have so far. 
but you're all brilliant. Okay, let's take it from the top a little faster and let's do the whole thing. So it'll be A-A-B-B. Enjoy the ride. And if you can't figure out any of the notes, just make something up. Just a little faster. One, two, one, and two. Let's do it one more time, a little bit faster, because it's funner. And I'll try and remember to do the repeat. Sometimes I get confused. <clears throat> I had boy children. One, two, ready, go. David will see you if your video was on. Okay. Someone has a question, Dave. It's Dottie. Oh my gosh. Hi, Dottie. David's going to unmute you. He's got a gadget across the hall. I've got a gadget over here. So what's your, myself. <laughs> what's your question? Okay. Uh, um, sorry I came in late. I I wasn't watching my clock. That's what happens when you're retired and in, in quarantine. Anyway, um, um, tell me the title of that piece. Ah. The title of that piece is Rose Tree. Okay, thanks. That's what I needed. And it's from Ireland. And as I told everybody else who came on time, uh, if you, you know, if you want to get PDFs of the tunes I'm teaching, just send me an email and I'll email them right along. Good to see you. Good to be here. Okay, so uh, we're going to go right ahead uh, to the next tune. It's David is waving at me. Just ask people to unmute when they've got a question and just start talking. Okay. My husband just informed me that the protocol is if you have a question, you should just unmute yourselves and start talking, and we will be listening. <clears throat> and paying attention. Okay, this next tune is from Norway. It's, it's the mazurka from Gudbrandsdal, uh, and it's really fun. It's in three, because it's sort of a waltz, and I'm gonna just play it, uh, same thing as I did with Rose Tree. I will play the AA and the BB. It's another binary tune. First time through, I'll just play the simple version, and then I'll dress it up because it's fun and uh, then we'll break it apart into phrases and then you will know it as well as me or better. So here we go, Mazurka Frog Bronzdal, from good Bronzdal, as opposed to bad Bronzdal, I guess, okay. And it's a nice mellow thing, it's just really cool.
about this tune, considering it's from Norway, is the use of what we call the Scottish snap. Instead of a long, short, long, it's short, long, short, long, short, long. And I love doing these with separate bows because it makes the Scottish snap sound snappier. So here we go. It's another two-part tune. There's an A, there's a B. In the A part, there's a first phrase of about six beats, followed by a second phrase that's also about six beats, although it's a different phrase. And then it is followed by the first phrase and then followed by the second phrase with a little bit of a different ending. So structure-wise, it's very similar to Rose Tree. So I'll play the first phrase slowly, and then you will play it after me slowly, and feel free to watch my fingers, feel free to ignore my bowings. I'll probably hate them in another 10 years anyway. They're very uh, subjective. So here we go. One, two, three, me first. Second phrase, slowly and me first, and then you guys. One, two, three, one, two, three. followed, as I said before, with the first phrase. The second phrase sort of, except it ends a little differently. Me first. simple actually. Does anyone have any questions? And if you do, just unmute yourself and start talking. Hey Debbie. Yes. I have a question. Could yep. you do that second phrase and play it and count the meter? Because I can't quite follow where the beats go on that syncopated bit. Oh, was it syncopated? <laughs> okay, yes. The second phrase goes one, two, three, one, two, three. I'll do that slower. One, two, three, one, two, three. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Thank so you. You Thank are you. so welcome. Okay. Uh, okay, we got the whole first part. Let's do the second. Oh, anyone else have any questions? Okay. The B part starts out with uh, a six beat, sort of a question. Then there's another six beats sort of an answer, and then another six beats, which is sort of an alternative answer, and then it ends with a six beats, the same six beats that we just did uh, to end the first part. Hopefully you're taking notes. Anyway, here we go. Here's the B part. First me, then you. One, two, three. Here's the question.
Okay, and the first answer to that question, one, two, three, one, two, go, it's me. six beats, I sort of consider it an alternative answer. One, two, three, one, two, three. Six beats are the same as the last six beats of the first half. One, two, three, one, two, three. the whole tune. Any questions so far? Okay, let's do the whole thing. Uh, at a nice slow tempo, that's pretty much a performance tempo as far as I'm concerned. You might have dancers who want to play a little, dance a little faster or dance a little slower, or if you are victimized by a backup player that is certain, that is making the assumption that it's a jig, you might end up having to do it uh, you won't like it. So we'll stick to a more mellow, sensible tempo. Uh, and again, the first time through each half, I'll play it as is on the music I'll send you, and then I'll be dressing it up on the repeats. So one, two, three, one, have fun. through this because you guys are so smart. Uh, after we get through this, we're going to play all the tunes together, one at a time. Okay, this next tune is actually a klezmer tune, and uh, there were actually uh, lots of Jewish homesteaders. Uh, I did a smidgen of research this morning so that I wouldn't appear to be too ignorant, uh, and it's North Dakota, uh, Ashley, North Dakota. They're not there anymore but they're all buried together in the same cemetery as is customary. So this tune is called My Old Civ, and uh, it's really kind of fun. It's a nice hut polka-esque tune in the key of A. And uh, one of the fun things about this tune is uh, when Dave and I were playing for uh, the first uh, Nebraska Shakespeare Festival, they were doing Taming of the Shrew, a great play, and uh, they asked us to come up with a vocal tune to use for the last scene. And uh, 
we were, we were looking at all the normal places, but then I said, you know, let's do my old sieve because it has words. And, uh, or it did the way we did it. And it was lovely. And uh, after the cast had the dress rehearsal, they asked where we found this wonderful tune. And they assumed it was Shakespearean or a Renaissance tune or something from the Tudor period. But uh, when we told them it was a klezmer tune, they all got a big kick out of that. So did we. So uh, here it is. I might even add the vocals of it originally, eventually. So my old sieve, we're in the key of A. It's in two. It's hot. It's fast. One, two, here I go. than in shoes. I will dance with you, my dear, and you will dance with me. You can have the daughter-in-law, the son-in-laws for me. So this too is an A A B B. Uh, in the A part, there's a first phrase, and then there's a, a first phrase repeats, but it sort of ends differently. Anyway, you'll catch it. Second, uh, the B part is also the same <clears throat> kind of thing. <clears throat> the alt, the an, the little ending of the first part is also the same ending as the second part. So if, as you're working on it, if you have a feeling of deja vu because you think you've been there before, it's because you've been there before. Let's go slow and sensible. One, I'll do the first phrase, and then you'll do it. And if it's too fast for you, all you really have to do, because there's lots of open E's involved, it's a very hot tune, you could go one and two and 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 one and one and But I know most of you guys, you're not going to have to resort to that sort of thing. But you could if you want to just simplify your life. So here's the first phrase, nice and slow. I'll do it first, then you do it, and it'll be wonderful. One, two, one, and two, and... Second half of the first half. One, two, one, and two, and.
more time. questions so far? I hope your toes are tapping. It helps. Here's the B part of the tune, and it's structured very much the same as the A part. You have a first phrase, and then you have most of the first phrase with an alternative ending. Here's the first phrase of the, the, the B part. One, two. second phrase of the B part is very similar to the first phrase of the B part with a little bit of an alternative ending, which is kind of important because otherwise people won't know when you're done. Here's the second half of the second half. One, two, one, two. Let's do the whole thing, same tempo. Let's uh, not rush ahead too fast. One must be cautious. One, two, with the repeats, and I'll be dressing it up the second time. Feel free to do the same. One, two, here we go. should be at least this fast, I think. Good luck. One, two, one, two.
faster. One, two, ready, go. again once I get my shoulder pad back on. <clears throat> One of the difficult things I think about learning a tune by ear is that you forget it, which is why of course I'm offering PDFs of the sheet music just to make, make sure you don't forget it because these are all really great tunes. So it will be helpful to see if you remember any of the other two tunes. Remember we did other two tunes? Yes, sometimes even that evaporates from the brain. Okay. The first tune was Rose Tree. Let's play it up to tempo because we are brave and we are obviously survivors. So remember the structure, if it helps. If it doesn't help, just forget it and play the tune. The tune knows what it's doing. It knows where to go. So if you're in the middle of the tune and you're wondering, oh my gosh, what should I do now? Just do something. The tune will guide you like a magic carpet. Okay, here we go. Rose tree. This is a tempo I happen to like. You can do it slower. You can do it faster. One, two, have fun. <laughs> Zirka Frau Gudbrandsdal. Doll. I had to write it out phonetically because the way it's spelled, it just made no sense to me. But the tune is luscious. Just a nice little relaxed waltz, A A B B. And let's do it twice through to see if you remember anything. One, two, three. One, two, three.
really, really fast. A, A, B, B, and hopefully we'll do it twice. And then we will have time for questions, so please make some up. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking. Ugh. One, two, one, two. <laughs> very hard to uh, enjoy and remember and hopefully you'll want to play them often they're really fun uh, I had a difficult time trying to decide what tunes to do uh, I wanted to make sure we could cover them in the space of an hour and I also wanted to make sure that they re represented at least th well, three different cultures and uh, so that's why I picked the tunes I picked does anyone have any questions please tell me you have some questions who has questions Well, okay. I'll just keep on talking for a minute. Uh, one of my hey, favorite... Oh, yes. Would you talk a little bit about the instrument you're playing? Okay, sure. Not a problem. Although my husband goes into more technical details when describing this instrument. This is a five-string viola. You all should have one. Uh, it has five strings. It has an E, and an A, and a D, and a G, and a C. Are you ready? And it vibrates so much you can feel it all the way to your toes. This was made by David Ravinus in Oregon, and he's still in Oregon, but I have heard that he has stopped making instruments. So if you find one that's available, just grab it. Uh, the particular shape that it's in was to minimize any strain that violists might find uh, because violists tend to want to play as big a viola as they can handle. Uh, and so that's the main reason for this. The bridge is kind of high, but boy, you get used to it really fast. And the back, and this particular viola, we have the signature, a replica of a signature of Salvador Dali because David Ravinus was a fan of Salvador Dali, so he incorporated it in his instrument. Uh, generally, uh, when I first contacted David, it was because my husband was out of town, and I asked uh, David if he, Ravinus if he could uh, make me one, and I knew it was going to take five years. But that was okay, because I had no money anyway, but I had five years to come up with it. And he said, yes, I would be happy to do it, but I also had an instrument returned on consignment, and if you want it, you can have it in two weeks, and you'll save $2,000. So, fortunately, my husband was right on board. He's a very supportive guy, both technically and in a humane way. So the instrument arrived, and I took one look at it, and of course I wanted it, but I felt kind of stupid writing out a check that big if I hadn't even played the thing. So I picked it up, and the only note I played was the open C. I immediately wrote out a credit card check and we've never regretted it. It's, it's just lovely, very fun. The previous maker, the previous owner, only a one other owner guy, uh, is the uh, principal violist in the Welsh National Opera Orchestra. And I emailed him, because I knew him, Philip Heyman, well, just through email, and I said, Philip, I might be buying your old axe. Why are you selling? And Philip Heyman emailed back very politely and said, well, I have three of these, and my wife does not understand. So that's how I got it. And although I've had no formal training as a violist, all I had to do was pay attention to what the instrument was telling me. 
So I just paid attention and that worked out great. Uh, the only other problem was because the previous owner was primarily a violist and very seldom needed the E string, the E was definitely the runt of the litter. So I started playing a lot of hut tunes in the key of A. <laughs> over and over and over, and now the E is an equal partner uh, with the other strings, so it's very fun. Thank you for that great question. Uh, anyone else have any other questions? Just unmute yourselves and start talking. Yeah, I had a question about the Irish tune, so the, yes. the rose tree, is that a reel? Oh, I think it's a polka. Other people think it's a reel. The cat, oh, the cat, okay. It would be in the hoedown category for a contest. That's the bottom line for me. So many labels just go on these things and they think it's a, it's, is it a wife? Is it a daughter? <laughs> is it a daughter-in-law? You know, uh, these labels are not always consistent with all of the musicians. So I try not to use them very often. It's so easy to get caught. But this would definitely be in the hoedown category in a contest. Uh, the version that I have that I can email you if you send me an email is uh, I wrote it out in four. So I wrote it out so that it's uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I could have just as easily done it in cut time, I suppose. There's just no standardization here, which I think is one of the reasons I like it, because it's not that big a deal. I hope that answers your question, or at least I responded. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, Debbie, what, what would you say is your favorite part of this type of music, of fiddle music? Uh, I, I like the fact that we can take the initiative to change the key, change the speed, change the bowing. There's a lot more required of the player and allowed to do by the player uh, than we would encounter in classical music. In classical music, you sort of spend a lot of time doing what the composer wanted which is only fair, they went to a lot of effort. So it's the uh, ability to make decisions and change things that really interests me. And where is your fiddle, by the way? You said you were gonna get one. I have one, but uh, I do need to uh, strung next year, be expecting my fiddle. I will, I will, I will write this down and expect it. Any other questions? Well, I do have a little anecdote. One of my favorite, uh, the, the, uh, the contest at, in Beatrice is just fabulous, as is a lot of the activities at the Homestead National Monument. But I think my favorite memory was going to the bathroom, and I was sitting in a little stall over here, and there was a little girl and her mother using the stall to my right. And we were busy being productive, and then at the end of the being productive, the little girl flushed the toilet, which if you have ever been there, you probably know the toilets are really loud. You have to sort of be ready for it. So the little girl flushed the toilet and she said to her mother, this toilet is too forte. I thought that was kind of cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, any other questions or any tune you want to hear again? No, they've had it with these tunes. They don't want to hear them again. Well, I hope you get to hear them again and share them with your pets and your relatives and your plants. It makes a big difference. Do we need to request the PDF or are you gonna send it to all of us? Uh, I would prefer it if you would request it that just to make sure I get your email right. To that same address that I sent the request for the Zoom information to? You you absolutely can, and I will be for sure to forward that along. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're yeah. very welcome. Yeah. Yeah. It, def it definitely helps to have something tangible after a workshop like this. So uh, this is a perfect medium to do it in, I think. Yes, thank you for the great lesson. Yeah, I love learning by ear, but when you get so many tunes in a short amount of time, it means something. Uh, to recall some of the some of the parts so thank you oh, oh yeah it, it gets confusing and then you end up you start playing one tune and then you end up playing another tune but most of the civilians won't care they'll have fun uh our little granddaughter who is charming i must say she's in second grade and i was teaching her ida red i know a lot of you probably know ida red amber you should be playing ida red and she wanted to stay on the e string because it's so convenient so i taught her She 
plays really well, and I encouraged her to sing it. It always helps to sing these tunes, whether they have words or not. So I said, well, can you sing it back to me? And she said, oh, yes, it goes, Ida Red, Ida Red, love a girl named Ida Red, with a knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home. It was really silly. She insists on doing it that way now. So, yeah, enjoy. Any other last comments or questions? Anything you want to know? Um, hi, I'm Cindy. Um, I just want to comment. I love your five-string viola because I have a five-string violin that I really, really like. So I have the exact same strings you have, but it's a violin, not a viola. I, just, I love it. I love that low C. I love... Yes, it's so grounding. And it does give you more flexibility. What I find, too, as I'm teaching uh, fiddle players, they'll often do, you know... I can play with them in the same octave, but then they often don't really hear themselves very well. But with my five string, I can go. And it just makes it easier for them sometimes to hear it. And I would encourage you with your five string, when you play a tune, oh, there it is. It's yeah. so cool. Uh, to experiment playing in lower octaves. I love you don't have to stay. I play more on my low strings than I do on my E string. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think I'm almost be a viola player probably, but I like what I have. <laughs> but you sort of are, you know, it's just a matter of how big is your instrument, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's lovely to have that, but particularly if you're in a jam session in which the contest at the homestead is lots of jam sessions. Uh, but if you're playing the same octave as everybody else, who cares? So it's <laughs> nice to be able to go low. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. So, Cindy, yeah. is that a dahlia? Uh, no. Yes, I believe it is. Yes, because yeah, that's, that's what I've got. Do you really? I, oh, cool. Yeah. But as a violist, I don't like the C string on that. Oh. Because it's too short and not. But but then again, my good viola sounds so much better than my dahlia. Well, on the C yeah, because it's a dedicated viola. But I, but I love my dahlia for teaching. Yeah. Because if I'm teaching a combined class of violins and violas, it serves for both. So. Yeah, yeah. And I use it usually yeah. for fiddling. Okay. Yeah, it, it's great to expand your horizons. Uh, for those of you who already have a five string, if you don't yet have a mandolin, uh, you should put it on your list of things to get before you're dead. <laughs> you learn so much from playing a fretted instrument and then comparing it to a non-fretted instrument. It's obviously a little weird at first, but you know, just for a couple of hours. And then one, the, what you learn from one, you can apply to the other. It's, it's very interesting. Well, thank you so much, Debbie. Um, what a great selection of diversity of songs from countries that did come on the premise of the Homestead Act. Um, and we will have our um, Prairie, uh, Winter Festival of Prairie Cultures um, coming um, after Thanksgiving this year, which will also highlight some of the other traditions brought by those very cultures um, that you were able to play today. So that's going to be the first part of our virtual Fiddle Festival event. Now, the second part is going to be at 1 p.m. Now, if you are usually a contestant or a participant in the Fiddle Festival, then you are probably familiar with Terrence Keith, uh, Chris Sayer, and Steve, because they are our judges. But they're going to play for you at 1 p.m. live on our Facebook page. But they're also going to take your questions. So you can just type them right in the comment box, and I will ask them live for you in between songs. So if you're wondering what they're looking for when judging or any questions about fiddling, that would be the time to ask and hopefully get you prepared for the next competition we hold here at Homestead National Monument of America. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please feel free to email that home underscore information at mps.gov to get that copy of the uh, music and I will be for sure that that gets passed along.